What's up, Retro Activist? Kenzie Retro here. And I've got my mum with me as well for this. Hi, people. <laughs> yeah. So um, for those that have been following my channel long enough, know that uh, I've got a tradition on my channel that I have a video up on this particular day, May 22nd. For those that might not understand the context, that's the day of the uh, anniversary of the uh, Manchester Arena attacks. I was at that concert that night, uh, the Ariana Grande concert in Manchester. And it's, there's no sugar coating it. It's not easy when it comes, it, it's never easy when it comes to like approaching the anniversary of anything um, of that sort of nature. But um, uh, so yeah, uh, when this goes, when this video goes live, folks, we're recording this a few days in advance, uh, May 18th, so I can get it up for the 22nd. Um, so I'm trying to think what I did previously. The 2018 was a couple of Ariana Grande covers. 2019 was a song that I that I wrote about my experience of that night. 2020, when we were still in the first lockdown of the pandemic, that was my uh, fairly in-depth review, about half an hour long, of uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, just after I finished doing the playthrough of that game. Then, last year, it was another song that I, uh, that I wrote. And now, we've got another review in this case, but it's going to be a film review this time. And it's, for me, right now, my favourite Studio Ghibli film, Arietti. Uh, it's also known as The Secret World of Arietti um, in North America. This was a Studio Ghibli film released in 2010, directed by um, Hiramasa Yonobayashi. And yes, I did work out how to pronounce that correctly. Uh, based on the Mary Knowlton book, The Borrowers. Now, the previous Studio Ghibli release, uh, Ponyo, which, which had some elements uh, from The Little Mermaid, um, the Studio Ghibli team wanted to be more faithful to the source material when it came to making this film. And I'm just going to get this out of the way. I feel they did a great job with it. Cons and this is considering I've not actually read The Borrowers, but I do know of The Borrowers itself, with, especially with the uh, a couple of TV adaptations for the BBC, plus The Borrowers film that stars John Goodman. But um, this is the first adaptation of this film in animation form. Um, and it's... There's a lot about this film that I really like because it's it's one of those films that never fails to put a smile on my face whenever I'm um, going through a bit of a rough patch. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why I've uh, chosen to do not so much a review per se, but just like discussing the film, if you will. Because um, like, like I say, it's my favourite Studio Ghibli film and it's, it's, a film that, it's a film that does uh, help me uh, in a lot of ways. So, yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's there we go. Uh, so there's the so we got there's so we've got the cast list in front of us, and uh, yes, I've got the sort of like um, sort of split screen in front of me right now. That I've got the recording on the left, and the stuff about the film on the uh, on the right of the screen. So you've got so you've got. Um, <clears throat> So there's two English dubs for this film. So we're going to focus on the English casts of these uh, films. So we've got um, Saoirse Ronan for this is for the UK English dub. This was this was this was distributed by Studio Canal in uh, 2011. Uh, Saoirse Ronan as Arietti himself. Uh, Tom Holland pre Spider Man Tom Holland as uh, Show. Olivia Coleman as uh, Homily, who is Arietti's mum. And you've got Mark Strong as Pod, who is Arietti's dad. Uh, Geraldine McEwen as Haru. And then you've got um, you've got Luke Allen Gale as uh, Spiller, who's also one of the uh, little people, as Haru calls them, uh, that we see about midway uh, through the film, who helps uh, Pod uh, after sustaining an injury while out exploring. And then we've got Sadako Maki, so I'm trying. I'm trying to remember which character that is again. Uh, as um, Felida uh, Law for the for the English uh, for the UK English dub for that one. Um, so there's a there's a couple of there's a couple of big names for um, the US English dub. One uh, you've got Amy Poehler from uh, Parks and Recreations uh, as Homily. 
Will Arnett, who is also the voice of Batman mm -hmm. in the Lego Batman in the in the Lego films and also the Lego Batman movie itself. Um, as, I, as I've mentioned, Amy Paul of Parker Records, uh, Bridget Bridget Mendler as Arietti, uh, David Henry as Sean, because they they because with the uh, Amer the U.S. English dub, they uh, they changed the names of a couple of the characters. Uh, Sho to Sean. Haru to Hara and Sadako to Jessica. And I'm trying to remember who I'm trying to remember who uh, Sadako is. Um, she knows the aunt. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to go through this here. Won't you? Uh, oh, that's the. Bear with her. So I can. Oh, that's um, Shul's caretaker. That's who it is. Yeah. There we go. There we go. That that wraps that up. You get that. You get the housekeeper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, this, uh, give him um, Carol Burnett as Hara and um, uh, um, Moises Arias as uh, Spiller and uh, Grace Moore as well. Um, as uh, Jessica in the U US English dub. So, um, in terms in terms of the casting for me, I feel that the casting choices for the English dubs, the the was it granted? I've only really listened mostly to the UK uh, English dub, but even at that, it's great great casting for, for me, um, especially with the especially with the. Sir Sharon being able to cap being able to capture that um childlike playful innocence that Arietti has. She's I mean Arietti just really um curious about the world around her. She's really eager to get her first borrowing underway at the start of um mm -hmm. of the film. And you know, so it, it, it's captured brilliantly by I say overall the cast capture the um the essence of these characters really. Um, really well, and, and 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 like I said, regarding the story itself, it's they they met, they they did a great job with uh, being as faithful as they could with the uh, the source material uh, that they had. Because this, in I mean, yes, this isn't uh, for 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 a lot of the more casual Studio Ghibli fans. This isn't really up there as one of their personal favorites because because you've got the likes of uh, my neighbor totoro castle in the sky um grave of the fireflies spirited away howl's moving castle you've got those films those films tend to be up there as like their personal favorites um but and and it's it's not it's not hard to see, it's not hard to see why with them um, the impact some of those films had especially my neighbor totoro who uh the title character himself is actually the mascot of the of Studio Ghibli uh, himself. So, um, but in terms of the in in terms of the visuals, they uh, it's re it's really well done with how they managed to um, uh, capture like the um, uh, the size and scale of um, the world around uh, the borrowers. Um, Getting getting things from uh, their uh, point of view with them, um, even even with the even with the little um, house that they that they live in themselves, it, it it's like we're actually there with them, and then just being able to explore the world around them, and you just you just see the uh, the size and scale of um, what they um, what's what are we looking for here? What's what we're looking for? Just in perspective, the, the sizes, yeah. size perspective. Size perspective, yeah, we'll go with that, yeah. Because Arietti is about the size of a bay leaf. Yeah. Which you see at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah so she, 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 get, she gets a bay leaf for, um, for her, for her mum at the start of the film because uh, it, we've, cause we find out it's, um, that her birthday is uh, a few days away. Mm -hmm. But the, the, thing, the thing with uh, Homily is that she does come across as a bit, Overprotective towards 
Uh, Helicopter Parrington. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's that's another way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. She's just that wants to wrap up and bubble wrap, but that wouldn't work out in the garden. <laughs> she, would, she would crinkle. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's I mean, but I mean I mean pod um not as uh, not quite in the same mindset as uh, homily at, in the early stages of the film, but uh, but then it starts to reach a point where he does get more protective. Uh, as well, because mm-hmm. um, because because, because we, it's established that the bo- the borrowers aren't really meant to be seen. No, but um, now the eighty makes a mistake that she is. <laughs> yeah, but um, I say, I say some of the some of them are say one or two occasions. Yes, um, done like somewhat in I wouldn't say intentionally, but just. Just natural curiosity, and then, and then, there's other occasions like with her first borrowing that she gets spotted by accident. Yeah, that's when she gets spooked. Yes, <laughs> I think that spooks her father as well. Yeah, <laughs> well, so, well, not not as not as much as Arietti because uh, mm-hmm. I mean I mean I mean Pod's had plenty of experience doing this anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but even at that, still. Um, you know, so the, the the size perspective it de- it definitely adds it definitely adds to how amazing uh, the visuals are and this and this is still with traditional animation folks rather than um, rather than uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of a lot of the industry at the time was um, a lot of the mainstream industry anyway anyway was um, more into the the three D computer generated um, mm-hmm. animation and Studio Ghibli they've they've stayed more or less loyal to the uh, traditional hand drawn animation that they've done for the last nearly 40 years so, it was absolutely fantastic it was, I thought it's actually better on some of the CGI stuff yeah yeah and that, and that's <laughs> one, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I love as well that's one of the biggest reasons for me I love hand-drawn animation more than I do with the uh, computer animation I mean nothing against computer animation films from the likes of their uh, Pixar mm-hmm. but it's just again personal preference at the end of the day because some computer animation doesn't age well, mm-hmm. and some of it some of it does. Whereas traditional animation, it feels timeless at the end of the day. Yeah. So, it, it was definitely well drawn out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and 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 that's and that's and that's one of the biggest reasons why you've got a lot of them, um, a, a lot of the fans of um, Japanese anime, be it TV shows or films in general. That they really enjoy this sort of animation style, mm-hmm. and one of the biggest, the biggest thing I love about this film is, of course, the soundtrack. I can't go through. I can't do a discussion regarding a film without discussing the soundtrack, and it is, it is definitely one of my personal favorite soundtracks of all time. Not just with. Uh, the songs. I mean, albeit there's like only like two or three in the film. That's enough. It didn't need yeah. any more. Yeah, but then, but then you've also got the score in the background as well, uh, and that was done by uh, uh, Cecile Corbet. The and this was also the first time that a non-Japanese composer worked on a Studio Ghibli film, um, and and Cecile is also a She's also a Studio Ghibli fan. She actually gave um, the crew that worked on this film a copy of one of her albums, and they enjoyed it. And uh, that was when they decided to make the call to get her to work on the soundtrack. And she did a fantastic job with this soundtrack. So like I say, the the score definitely captures that sense of, wonder and adventure that we see throughout this film and i mean mean, even the instrumental version of um of arietti's song which is like the big song from this film um even the instrumental version of that uh, of that song it's it definitely captures the uh, uh the curiosity that arietti has for what's around her given the fact that she's now able to start borrowing on a re- uh, but as I say, she's yeah. so curious, and the music's so upbeat and lively. Like, yeah, just brings that across. Yeah, and 
as, and again, that's one of the biggest reasons why I love this soundtrack as much as I do. And the soundtrack, believe it or not, folks, is actually on Spotify if you guys want to listen to it. Because, I mean, I've actually got it saved in my Spotify library. And as, as I said, so there's, one particular, there's one particular part of the, the soundtrack, Our House Below, which is the second song we hear in the film. The first one being um, The Neglected Garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, Our House Below. That... I said, Our House Below, that song never fails to bring a smile to my face whenever I listen to it, because that is, for me, the perfect example of capturing the childlike curiosity that Arietti has throughout the film. Mm-hmm. And I say it's a, say, so regarding how the, so regarding how the school was actually put together, I say it says here, the school was combined using, it combined the musical styles of Celtic folk music medieval Turkish songs, Baroque madrigals, and Irish marches as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, recorded in France with a small orchestra that included a small an acoustic guitar, bass, string quartet, bagpipes as well, um, Irish flutes, uh, a bodron as well, alongside various percussion instruments and uh, an accordion uh, as well. So in, in, you, you, you even hear, um, you even hear um, uh, like, uh, it's, a, it's a smaller variation of how I think it's a Klarzak. I might be wrong on that one. Because um, that's, that's like one of the first instruments that you hear for um, Our House Below. Uh, and this actually managed to win the Best Original Soundtrack album at the Japan Golden Disc Awards in uh, 20, 2011, selling 200,000 copies of that, of that album, uh, of that soundtrack. Uh, in Japan alone, certified gold in the process. So massive props. For, mm-hmm. so, so not only successful commercially, but also in terms of awards uh, as well. So I mean, at the end of the day, this, in terms of, in terms of a starting point for somebody wanting to get into Studio Ghibli's films, I'd say this is a. I'd say this film's a great starting point, in my opinion. Yeah. Because, uh, I will, although I will say the very first Studio Ghibli film that I watched, like all the way through, apart from like there was a couple of occasions where Studio Ghibli films were like, like Porco Rosso, a perfect uh, an example of that. I, I only caught like the tail end of that one, but like watching one all the way through, Castle in the Sky was the first one that I watched, and that was, and then and then from there that was me hooked on Studio Ghibli and. I say, I say, and, and with how extensive their catalog is, I always find myself coming back to Arietti, and that and that's all for the reasons that I've already uh, mentioned, um, for, for the reasons that I've already mentioned here. Now, of course, as with talking about these films and the problem with trying to talk about Studio Ghibli films is that. I can't really like use anything that substantial, mainly because Studio Ghibli's copyright is a bit more aggressive, if you will, compared to Disney. It's really intense. Yeah, because because I think it's a I think it's a case of possibly I might be wrong on this one, so somebody might correct me in the comments regarding this one. Needing to get written permission from the studio itself to be able to use their uh, library of films if you're wanting to use clips of them for something like this. Yeah. So so that's why this is just going to be, so that's why this video is just going to be me and my mum on camera talking about the film. Um, but when I do, if slash when I get round to covering the Studio Ghibli films in... Uh, in its own run in the Kingdom of Isolation, where, because um, because there were a number of them, um, a majority of the um, Studio Ghibli catalog did have English dubs done by Disney themselves. So that's why I figured instead of doing just the films that Disney did an English dub for, why not do the entire catalog? The only issue is I can't. Well, the only issue is when it comes to covering Grave of the Fireflies, 
That's the only Studio Ghibli film that isn't on Netflix right now, mainly because of licensing issues, because it's a different company that owned the uh, streaming rights for that film. But it's a good, it's a good job. Um, it's a good job I do have uh, the Studio Ghibli catalog in some capacity on my end. So, but I will say when I do get around to covering Grave of the Fireflies, it's that's going to be a bit of an emotional roller coaster to say the least, because from general consensus regarding that film, it's one of the most heartbreaking films that's ever been made because it's it's World War II Japan and you've got two siblings struggling to get by. And from from what I've heard from people that have watched it, it's definitely not an easy watch. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll cross that Bad bridge. part of history. Yeah. yeah. But again, I will cross that bridge when I get to it. So, but, but, but like I said, but, but like I said earlier, this Ariati I feel is a great starting point for anybody wanting to get into Studio Ghibli's um, catalog of films. I mean, they've, I mean, they've done incredibly well to keep going as long as they have with their, uh, so with with the other films that I've um, mentioned previously. And um, the latest one that I watched for the first time was uh, Whisper of the Heart. So. I mean, I mean that that's that's another one that I've been um, on first year. I, I definitely enjoyed uh, that one. Uh, I'll just need to work out what one to go for next. But again, I'll I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. So, with taking into account that we feel that this is a good starting point for anybody wanting to get into studios uh, Studio Ghibli's catalog, this is one we definitely recommend that you uh, you guys watch. Um, because because uh, like I said, a majority of the Netflix cat. Um, a majority of the Studio Ghibli catalog is on Netflix right now. If anybody wants to, um, if anybody wants to watch it, and and the great th- and the great thing is, you can actually. I'm pretty sure I might be wrong on this one. Bear with me, folks. Let's see if we can. See if we can go through this. That's, that's that's the subtitles audio. And the great and the great news is, folks, that. One of the audio tracks on here is the Japanese dub as well. So you can listen to the original Japanese dub with the English subtitles on as well, if you so wish. So, Mm -hmm. and that way, dedicated Studio Ghibli fans can get that proper Studio Ghibli experience with the original Japanese dub of these films with the English subtitles on. It was for all audiences. Exactly. (laughs) So, yeah. Um... So yeah, that so yeah, that does it for this um this uh, video. And of course, as with uh, all the videos that I've um, done previously regarding the anniversary of Manchester, dedicated to anyone who has been affected by uh, the events of that night, be it uh, be it from the night itself or at some point afterwards. Um, if you enjoyed this discussion of uh, um, this little gem from Studio Ghibli's uh, library. You can hit the thumbs up, and if you um, if you want to keep up to date with what happens on this channel, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click the bell. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any uh, so you don't miss any videos that I put up on this channel. Uh, I've got a backlog of Kingdom of Isolation episodes that I need to get edited and uploaded, so they'll be going up in the uh, in the near future. I'm actually I might actually make a start on getting those edited just now, mm-hmm. so that they're out so that they're out the way. Um, and I've I've already, I've already got my my next date my next day sorted for recording the next uh, episode regarding dinosaur and um, looking back on it now a lot of fan a lot of disney fans are thinking this isn't as good as i remember growing up it never is it just yeah <laughs> when you get to my age you realize it never is yeah <laughs> it gets worse as you get older yeah <laughs> but uh, but yeah uh, but, until, but until then, folks, we'll see you guys next time. And always remember to stay retroactive. Right. Bye, people. <laughs>